The Union Aerospace Corporation is the largest corporate entity in existence. Originally focused on weapon and defense contracts, new ventures have expanded into biological research, space exploration, and other scientific endeavors. With unlimited funds and the ability to engage in research outside of moral and legal obligations, the UAC controls the most advanced technology ever conceived. Incoming transport detected. Mars approach, Dark Star with U07063 passing through 38000. Roger, Dark Star, descend to 2000, set speed, contact ground on 26972. Roger that tower. We have them on radar, sir. They'll be landing in a few moments. Excellent. See that Counselor Swan is sent directly to me. Yes, sir. Tower, Dark Star on final. We've got the Dark Star. You are set for lockdown. Welcome back. need to check in at reception. If you're looking for someone to help you, just head to reception. Welcome to Mars City. Union Aerospace is premier research facility. Here. To expedite your I'm processing, off this please rock. proceed directly to and reception. You should too. If you're staying here, watch your back. You should be careful. It's not safe here. Trust. Welcome to Mars, Marine. I'm gonna need you to step on one of those red squares on the floor for a bioscan. This'll only take a second. Okay, let me get this started. You're gonna need to hold still. Moving around only makes the test take longer. All right, bioscan looks good. You're cleared for entry. On behalf of the UAC, welcome to Mars City. This facility serves as the central hub for all scientific research, Attention. archaeological Director study, Banks. and military Please report operations. to Central Administration. Welcome to Mars. First time? You can just leave your bag there. I'll have it sent up your quarters. Okay, there's a few things we need to take care of first. This is your personal data assistant. You'll need this to access all secure areas. If you get clearance for any security zones, It'll download directly. It's important, so don't lose it. I see here that Sergeant Kelly has requested your immediate attention. Head directly to Marine Command. It's just that way. Follow the signs. Welcome to Mars, Marine. This briefing is designed to acquaint you with a few of the standard operating procedures here on the Mars Mars Post. City is a First and foremost, facility. chain of command. All enlisted personnel areas. are under the Thank command of Master Sergeant. I'm here because there seems to be some very serious problems. Oh, really? Do I need to remind you of the groundbreaking work that we're doing here? No but I've been authorized by the board to look at everything. The board authorized you? Hmm. The board doesn't know the first thing about science. All they want is something to make them more money, some product. Don't worry, they'll get their product. 
After how many accidents? Tell me, Dr. Petruger, why are so many workers spooked, complaining, requesting transfers off Mars? They simply can't handle life here. They're exhausted and overworked. If I had a larger, more competent staff and bigger budget, even these few accidents could have been avoided. I'm afraid you'll get nothing more until my report is filed with the board. I will need full access, Dr. Petruger, Delta included. I won't have any difficulties doing that, will I? Only if you get lost, Swan. Just stay out of my way. Amazing things will happen here soon. You just wait. Let's go. I don't think I've seen you before. You must be a replacement for one of the guys we lost. Someone new. Your universe it's always now. nice seeing new faces around here. Hope you enjoy your stay. Miller, you hear about Corporal Allen? Yeah, they said he just lost it. Shipped home this week. We lose one, gain another. No shit. I wonder who they're gonna move to Bravo Team now. Who knows? I just hope they don't take anyone from my squad. I hate pulling those. Super Turbo Turkey Puncher 3. <laughs> suits arrived too. Weird. The UAC must be worried about something. I hear there's been more accidents in Delta. <laughs> accidents? That's good. Is that what they're calling him now? So, Attention. Dr. Braddock, please report to Environment report Management to Sergeant Office Kelly Alpha. He's in Command HQ. Be interrupted now. I've got work to finish. Presenting yet another great accomplishment of the UAC, the Series 3 plasma gun is an extremely versatile medium-range comp... I'm trying to reconfigure this little guy. I can't talk now. Don't you have some orders you need to be following? Took your sweet time, Marine. Now, here's the situation. Another member of the science team's gone missing. Since you're the ranking FNG, you get to find him. I want you to check out the old decommissioned comm facility. We heard he might be heading that way. The only way there is through the service passage under Mars City. I've programmed this sentry to guide you to the maintenance elevator. Hope you follow the sentry better than you've followed orders so far. We'll pick up some gear at the security checkpoint at the bottom of the elevator. Oh, and when you find him, just bring him back. Do not hurt him. Now move out. Didn't you hear, Sarge? He gave you a mission. Move out, Marine. No time to talk, bud. We both got work to do. Attention, UAC personnel. Interested in earning more credits? Volunteer at Delta Labs today. See your service branch director for more details. Do you know what Carter said? No, what? He 
This is the audio log of maintenance technician Adam Bernache, dated November 10th, 2145. I fixed the couplings on the heat shields this morning the with UAC no problems. Cares about the quality I did, of however, have another odd experience while I was down there. Shortly after care finishing care the first coupling adjustment, I distinctly heard whispering. When I went to investigate the sounds, I found nothing. I checked the work logs, and I was the only person scheduled to be in that area today. That experience, coupled with the stories I've heard from some guys over in the Delta Labs, has me pretty freaked out. I'm really beginning to hate going down to the underground maintenance area. People down there are a bit off, the mumbling, the weird looks. The whole place is just plain creepy. I'm always expecting someone to jump out at me. I've secured my tools and the busted modulator in the storage cabinet next to the maintenance elevator. Technicians should use cabinet code 396 to access them. End of log. Welcome to the dungeon, Marine. Most unexciting place on Mars. I'm gonna need you to grab some armor and secure your pistol before I can pass you through security. Okay, grab your gear. Now you're ready for combat. Let me do a radio test. Mars Sec radio check. Excellent. Good signal. Looks like you've been assigned the decommissioned comm facility. Just follow the main passage through the underground junction, then straight out. You'll have a quick evac. And what better way to see the Martian surface than to run across it? Okay, you're all set. Oh yeah, keep in mind, civilians are working down here. Don't get excited and shoot at Oh, haven't seen anyone new down this way in quite some time. Welcome to the dungeon, brother. Enjoy your stay. Hey! You're looking for the scientist, right? I'm not sure you want to find him. You see... Uh, uh, never mind. Don't listen to me. Never mind what I say. I shouldn't talk about it. Listen, Scotty. I've done this a million times. It's not that hard. Why don't you crawl your fat ass down here and do it yourself? Because I'm getting paid to make sure you do it, buddy. I don't know if I can really help you with anything. I'm kind of busy here. Just finish the coupling so we can continue. This is Grant Baston, your environmental services supervisor. The date is October 19th. I've been hearing an alarming number of reports on some uh, unexplainable things. Being on another planet and working underground has always been a little spooky, so we always have the occasional report of strange things. But what is worrying me is the fact that the number of these reports are up by a lot. People are truly frightened. The rumors we are hearing about experiments from the Delta Complex are not helping. The power fluctuations aren't helping at all either. Having the lights flicker constantly and losing power for several minutes at a time is scaring everyone down here. I'm doing my best to keep people in track. But we're continually shorthanded. Someone's reporting in sick almost every day. I'll keep my director apprised of the situation, and we'll continue to log reports as I get them. This is Grant Baston, the Environmental Services Supervisor. The date is October 19th. 
I've been hearing an alarming number of reports on some uh, yes, sir. Just that the plane will demand a lot out of these things. Being on another planet and working Just underground has always been a little bit team what they need. So we always have the occasional report of strange things. But what is worrying Jeez. is the fact that the number of these reports... You make a habit of sneaking up on people? People are frightened. Everyone's already on edge down here with all the strange things that have been going on. Just let me get this communication out. They have to be warned while there is still time. I can't let... I, you don't know what I've seen. You can't possibly understand or comprehend. The devil is real. I know. I built this case. I'm getting abnormal readings here. This is bad. God. I can't hold these levels. Cruising it! Help us. Sergeant Kelly, we're under attack by an unknown enemy force. Fall back to Marine HQ to regroup. I say again, fall back to Marine HQ and await further orders.
Warning. Filtration on in motion. This is Command Agent Rage Jim. Extension. Report directly to Marine Headquarters and await further orders. This is the audio log of Frank Delahue, engineering manager assigned to power production dated October 18, 2145. The current operational status of the grid is 23% over nominal capacity. I've increased work shifts to 12 hours a day for all personnel to keep up with demand. The constant and increasing load from the Delta complex is causing havoc. We are going to start losing critical systems if we have to sustain these levels much longer. I request clearance to requisition parts from other departments in order to maintain our equipment. Okay, I don't know what is going on over in Delta, but I'm doing all I can down here. The constant demands are bad enough, but the rumors going around are making things a whole lot worse. And I gotta tell you, if things don't get better soon, all hell is gonna break loose. This is the audio log of Frank Delahue, engineering manager assigned to power production dated October 24th, 2145. Reclamation problems continue to plague the main processor. Two more valve overloads on that unit in just the past week. These overloads can destroy the valves, causing very dangerous fire jetting with enough heat to incinerate sensitive equipment nearby. Today we've had only one reported injury as a result of these valve failures. And this is due in large part to the quick response of the engineering team. Our procedure of entering the failure code 842 in the operation terminal has proved adequate and I recommend no changes in that procedure. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sergeant Kelly. You don't know what we're up against. Repeat, we have me. negative ID on the assailant. This is Sergeant Kelly. I am unable to reach Mars City from my current position. I need the Marine HQ to regroup and await further orders. Hey, you! Up here! Quickly! I thought I was the only one still alive. I can't believe I found you. Something happened. I don't know what. It, it, it was like a shockwave. It, it passed through the entire base. People started changing. It was crazy. I, I was working up here on the vent shafts. I don't know how I survived. Go for help. Please. No way. I'm staying up here. It's the only safe place. You can't get me down. I'm staying here. Be careful. I don't know what's in there. Mark Stanton, Manifest Controller, currently stationed at Mars City. I'm not sure who to send this to, so I decided to send it to quite a few people. If you're on the recipient list, please take a moment to review this report. It is quite important. I'm very concerned over the shipping procedures out here. I am the Manifest Controller, and as such, I need to be informed of everything coming in and out of Mars City. Someone here is subverting my position and preventing me from getting data on things being shipped. This is unacceptable. Not only could this reflect poorly on my upcoming review, but this is my job and I'm tired of being out of the loop. I have no idea who keeps telling the shipping crews to allow things in and out without allowing me to produce or procure the manifest, but whoever it is, it must stop. One of the dock workers actually told me to piss off when I tried to stop one of the last containers from going straight to Delta. I immediately file the report and will follow up with the transit manager next time I see him. End of log.
Specialist Wilson. My team is gone. They're all dead. I'm running blind. What are my orders? Over. Specialist Wilson, this is Sergeant Kelly. Stay sure. Look your last known RP and fortify your position. We'll find you. Audio log for Dr. Casey, currently stationed at Mars City. I have just left the weekly status meeting here in medical. The most prominent topic was the vast number of psychological issues we are seeing as of late. The number of reports indicates that 10% of the overall base personnel have shown symptoms. As many people will not come in for this type of thing, the number of affected personnel could truly be in the 30 to 40% range. 
It has even manifested itself here in medical. We uh, have several nurses and a couple of good doctors out for related reasons. I'm going to formally request two additional psychiatrists on the next shuttle from Earth. The two we have are being overworked, and the content of their sessions with patients is starting to affect them as well. Dr. Casey now. Dr. Mark Casian, at 1547, patient Jonathan Wills was admitted after complaining of insomnia and nausea. According to the nurse, Mr. Wills was calm and exhibited no signs of disorder when he was brought to exam room 5. However, by the time I reached him at 10 after 4, his personality had changed dramatically. When I entered the room, Mr. Wills lunged at me with a scalpel he apparently stole from a supply drawer. With the assistance of an orderly, we managed to subdue and sedate him without injury. Mr. Wills was heavily medicated and could not be diagnosed, but in the 20 minutes he was left unattended, he managed to carve three symbols in his arm and cut his own tongue into two halves. I, I can only guess at the cause of his problems. I hope that additional psychiatrists arrive soon. In the meantime, in response to this assault, all medical supplies and armaments will be locked in a secure hospital cabinet with the code 347. Dr. Casey and out. Audio report on troop morale. Morale here is beginning to drop. It's nothing to worry about yet since I keep my Marines sharp and ready to go, but events at the base are wearing on the troops. There have been a lot of things happening here on the base. I believe the UAC experiments being performed here must be declared. Out here, they could be experimenting on God knows what. There are quite a few people missing. No Marines, of course. It's the civilian population I am referring to. Bottom line, Whatever it is they have going on here has my men on a racer's edge. At this point, there is no cause for alarm, but I am requesting we rotate squads every 90 days instead of every 180. I will continue to report as the situation develops. It is good we have the new Marines en route. Fresh faces will help. Sergeant Tyson, out. Audio report confirming new troop deployments for the Mars City Marine Facility, October 30th, 2145. The new troops will be arriving within a few days. I've started a series of training exercises focusing on close quarter small weapons combat, as well as instituting mandatory refresher courses on all munitions and weapons in our armory. In response to the large number of security breaches and general feelings of ill will around the base, I've doubled security details, placing two Marines at each checkpoint. This additional presence should help calm things down. I expect that the incoming Marines are not quite as green as the last deployment. They've turned out okay, but some combat experience will go a long way right now. Sergeant Tyson, out. still alive. I'm unable to return to Mars City. All passages out of the Delta Complex have been blocked. I'm setting up a command post here. I can monitor status reports of the entire base from Delta Central Authority and communicate with other Marine teams. It's your mission to link up with Bravo team and get that transmission sent. Head toward Alpha Labs. It's the fastest way to find them. 
I'll update your PDA security clearance from here. Good job, and good luck, Marine. any operational sentry bots, use them. Those guys pack a lot of firepower. The UAC is here to help you. Bravo team quickly. They need all the firepower they can get. Sending that transmission is critical to our survival.
the UAC is taking over this operation. Operation? Is that what you're calling it? The situation is out of control. It's not out of control, Swan. You are. I'll manage this, and you and your flunky will be taking control of nothing. Do you understand? Yes, Petruger. I think I do understand. Okay, plan B. Welcome to the Alpha Labs. Formerly designated Phase 1 by the Union Aerospace Offworld Research Division, the Alpha Labs began construction on October 29, 2095, and became fully operational July 17, 2130. Originally created as the prime science and research facility, Alpha Labs are responsible for the development of leading edge technology such as the Elemental Phase Deconstructor, Hydrocon and molecular fuel storage compressor, all presently being utilized right here in the Alpha Labs. These endeavors have allowed for much needed expansion into the UAC's current leading research facility, Delta Labs, where Union Aerospace is opening all new opportunities in research and development. With continued investment and hard work, the Union Aerospace Corporation strives for excellence and is committed to building a better tomorrow.
Access denied. Thank you. 
Bravo team reports there's some sort of unidentified growth taking over parts of the base. I don't know what it is, but it can't be good. Stay sharp. I tried everything. The computers aren't responding. I can't get root access to the systems. We can't do it here. We'll have to access the system somewhere else. All right. Log of Director William Banks, made on October 20th, it's bloody one. It's come to my attention that we have an alarming number of missing personnel. My office has received four additional reports from Delta in the last week alone, mentioning that personnel are not reporting for work, and that calls to their quarters have gone unanswered. My office has sent the names of those personnel to Mars City Security, and they have promised to initiate an investigation. This news is very disturbing, especially at a time when we have so many people in the infirmary suffering from sudden cases of schizophrenia and other psychological disorders. I hope there is no connection between those cases and these reports of missing personnel. This is the audio log of Director William Banks, dated October 5th, 2145. It has been brought to my attention by environmental services that the recent power grid changes have caused many non-critical systems to malfunction. The report explains that this is due to either intermittent power outages or lower than optimal voltage input. It also says that sufficient power distribution to all non-critical systems is becoming more difficult to maintain thanks to Dr. Vitruger and his so-called optimization to the energy stores in and around the facility. I assured the director of ES that he would file a report with central authority on this.
This is Paul Simon, security specialist in IT. Our network security has been breached several times over the last few days. Now, it looks like it may have been going on longer than that, but whoever did this really knew what they were doing. They covered the tracks really well. I just happened to notice some log anomalies or it would still be going on. The intrusion came on an encrypted carrier signal from the Delta complex. They piggybacked the virus on one of the supercomputer requests and it peeled itself from the data stream once it was inside our firewall. Someone on the inside there has to be responsible. Unfortunately, due to security in that complex, I can only tell it came from within Delta. There's no way to identify which machine or even which lab it came from. Whoever was in our system had access to all personal data, including medical reports. My team will be monitoring the network closely in the next few days, looking for anything unusual. End of log. Received a report that you haven't reached Bravo team. Need to pick up the pace. Can't wait for you. Reaching the communication facility quickly is imperative. UAC takes pride in its safety record. Please follow UAC procedures. generations, humankind has lived under the looming specter of slowly dwindling natural resources. Our new ventures on planets
CDC researchers have developed dramatic solutions. Solutions that will soon pay off for the UAC, investors, and in the entire human race. Mars itself is our chief ally and the key to our solution. Look around at its vast red desert, rich in naturally occurring iron oxide. They are the raw materials of our future. We have developed a process that destabilizes the atomic structure of pulverized iron oxide and separates it into subatomic particles. For generations, humankind has lived under the looming specter of slowly dwindling natural resources. Our new ventures on planets like Mars have only intensified our need to find fresh sources for metals, petrochemicals, food, water, and even air. To meet that need, UAC researchers have developed dramatic solutions. Solutions that will soon pay off for the UAC, its investors, and indeed the entire human race. Mars itself is our chief ally and the key to our solution. Look around at its vast red deserts, rich in naturally occurring iron oxides. They are the raw materials of our future. We have developed a process that destabilizes the atomic structure of pulverized iron oxide and separates it into subatomic particles, which are then siphoned off to create new elements. Like alchemists of old, the elemental phase deconstructor allows us to transform red Martian soil into clean air, fresh water, and hydrogen fuel, the building blocks for a sustainable, human-friendly Martian environment. And this is only the beginning. With continued research, we envision creating ever more complex molecules, even organic matter itself. Atom by atom, the UAC is building an ever brighter future for humankind. Audio log for Kyle Berger, research supervisor for the EPD project. Uh, the, uh, the elemental phase deconstructor is fully operational, and the research data we have gathered so far is very impressive. Unfortunately, we had a terrible accident last week. Research assistant Patterson was calibrating one of the core committers in the chamber, and witnesses say he appeared to see something. It's almost like uh, something was talking to him and uh, he backed right into the particle beam. It was not a pretty sight, as it took off the backside of his head. He lived a few minutes, although I'm not sure you'd consider that living, but they say his eyes rolled back and forth, and he was trying to talk, although after losing that much brain matter, I'm sure it was his reflex actions. Anyway, due to this, I have enacted new safety protocols in the lab and we have stocked one of the storage cabinets with emergency medical supplies. The code for the cabinet is 752. End of the
laser active. Audio log for Jack Smith, a benefits analyst in HR 1024-2145. I just went through another batch of accident reports from the science team. We've had five more people hurt this week while working with the equipment. The most serious incident was one John Hughes, whose hand was caught in one of the plastic extrusion systems. He was performing maintenance on it and states that he unplugged it and had the safety key in his pocket. It managed to activate without an apparent power source and uh, shredded his arm up to the elbow before someone got him out. <laughs> it's been reported that the uh, machine is still running and we can't shut it down. The cost on that incident alone is enough to raise the red flag, but this is, is one in a pile. We're going to overrun our budget on benefits payout this quarter. And while it's not my department, I have to assume that the new equipment budget is going to be blown out as well because, according to these reports, the equipment's breaking down on a daily basis. Please mark this for review at corporate end of log. Gas leak stopped. Fire extinguished.
Safer worlds for everyone. For centuries, people on Earth have waged war over two things vital to human existence, fuel and water. As part of its ongoing commitment to create safer worlds for everyone, the UAC recently unveiled its development of the Hydrocon. Though still in its prototype stages, the Hydrocon will, in one dramatic move, forever end all shortages of water and fuel. By splitting iron oxide molecules, the Hydrocon produces oxygen and hydrogen cheaply and safely without the need for large amounts of electricity. The hydrogen is then used for hydrogen fuel, a substance so versatile and clean that it can be used in everything from home appliances to today's most demanding rocket engines. A side benefit of producing this fuel is an endless supply of pure, spring-like water that is more refined than any earthbound spring. We envision a world where technologies such as the Hydrocon can be used to end drought and civil strife in impoverished nations where water or fuel have ever been in short supply. While always at the forefront of scientific research and development, Union Aerospace hopes that the creation of the Hydrocon will continue to make safer worlds for everyone. Oh, he startled me. Man, am I ever glad to see you. I thought it was all alone. It's been freaking spooky lately. The hydrogen's blown a few circuits and is unstable. Be careful with that gun. A stray bullet into the glass shields could blow the whole area. I'm gonna try and get this thing stabilized. I'll head to the science office when I have this under control. If I don't get the hydrogen operating at acceptable levels, it could blow. Safer worlds for everyone. For centuries, people on Earth have waged war over two things vital to It's part of its own world. It's development of the Hydrocon. Though still in its prototype stages, the Hydrocon will in one.
the UNC, we make her a better teacher. Broadcasting on a very low frequency. If you can hear me, I'm not far. Please help me. I've locked myself in storage room C4. Please, if anyone can hear me, please help me. Audio report regarding the disrespectful treatment of new research staff, September 14, 2145. As you know, I have gone to considerable effort to recruit my staff researchers for Alpha Lab. Finding team members with the qualifications, let alone the willingness to come to Mars, has not been a trivial task. You know this already. But it is necessary that I emphasize why their complaints must be taken seriously. We won't be able to keep our people or recruit new researchers if the harassment continues. No, harassment is exactly the right word. I'm routinely getting reports of UAC security asking inappropriate questions and submitting my staff to unnecessary background checks. I must insist that we be allowed to keep our personal lives private and be left to complete our assignments without further delays. If there is some kind of security threat, I suggest that UAC security look more deeply into their own staff. This is Andrew Chin, and
since the dawn of the space age. Thanks to the Hydrocon, the specialist teams ask the big question. Can we devise a way to store and deliver that fuel to make the dream of deep space station a reality? The answer is... Move, move, move! Under the direction of Dr. Malcolm Batruga, key UAC scientists have made startling new discoveries in the fields of quantum physics. And with them, they have been able to use the actual... Team reports they've located your position but are unable to move to your current location. Head to your engineering and try to link up with them in sector three. Audio log for Walter Connors. The MFS compressor is producing fantastic results. The latest modification I made to the dilation matrix were the real key to the recent breakthrough. All in all, I feel my work on this project has been the catalyst that propelled everything forward. I've also taken a set amount of time each day to make sure that everyone is doing their job, and of course I check all of their data to ensure that no mistakes are made. This is going to be a huge moneymaker for the company, and quite honestly, without my input and hard work, I'm not sure that we would have gotten this far. But I wanted also to thank you for your supervisory role in the project. Working with you is a true honor. Just remember me in the end of the year reports, as I'm certain I deserve a promotion. That won't turn out. Since the dawn of the space age, Union Aerospace has been at the forefront of not only developing new technology, but pushing those developments to even more daring extremes. With an abundant production of hydrogen fuel, thanks to the Hydrocon, the specialist teams ask the big question. Can we devise a way to store and deliver that fuel to make the dream of deep space research a reality? The answer has been a resounding yes. Under the direction of Dr. Malcolm Batruga, key UAC scientists have made startling new discoveries in the fields of quantum physics. And with them, they have been able to use the actual space between electrons and protons in a molecule as a storage medium for fuel in our interplanetary antimatter drives. Now, fuel that would once take up half the payload of an interplanetary ship only occupies a fraction of that space. You are looking at the molecular fuel storage compactor. The MFS compressor is yet another UAC marvel that brings the dream of reaching and colonizing the most distant planets closer to a reality. The UAC has long made safer worlds for everyone, and now they will bring those worlds even closer than you could ever imagine.
shoot. Uh, I can help you. The lights are all out. Uh, I'll lead you through here if you can get me off this base. Come on, I can't wait. We can't stop. We've got to keep moving. Electromagnetic pulses have knocked out the electrical systems in this area. Watch out. A big one could knock out our lights. I can't wait. There's one.
Warning. Toxins present. Please execute cleanup procedure. Operations Coordinator Mark Lamia, dated November 1st, 2145. I'm filing this report because I am frustrated beyond belief by the level of incompetency I have to deal with here. I don't know where HR is getting the new employees, but the last five guys they've sent me were all a bunch of idiots. They can't get any of their work done on time. I constantly have to keep an eye on them. They work slow. They don't follow any of the standard operating procedures, and they can't even remember basic things that I tell them. For example, I changed the cabinet door codes here to 123 because I thought that was easy enough to remember, but they still forgot. I don't understand why HR can't get me better people. I'm requesting full authority to hire and fire my own employees. It's the only way I can run my department smoothly. End of log. Toxic gas levels decreased 50%. is cleared. Waste disposal area now safe for entry. Marine, we gotta pick up the pace. We got more men down. Bravo team is barely holding their own.
change your position. Lord, uh, the the now, shut down. Massive service disruptions throughout the entire base. Uh, how long I'll be able to track? Bravo team has just entered the end Pick up the pace. You aren't far behind. Thanks for getting me out of there. I got trapped in the chamber when the power went out. I don't know what's going on here. I don't understand why none of the systems are responding. I'm going to try to get an uplink into the main system from here. This is a secure terminal. I might be able to get a connection. Security log number 3072 for Delta Security Chief Michael Abrams, November 15th, 2145. I've just come from the Armament Division where I was issued one of the new BFG 9000 series weapons. <laughs> While well, they weren't kidding about how much lighter it is over previous prototype models. Won't be so bad carrying this one around. <laughs> Anyhow, for a couple of weeks now, many of the security teams have not been following proper reporting procedures. Not sure if it's the format of the new SIR, so I'll make sure each team is scheduled by training division to get spun up on the new reports. There have been some security issues in the Alpha Labs. I sent a team over to investigate, and now I can't reach them on any comm channel. Guess I'll have to go over there myself. Well, I'm headed over there now. I'll finish the security report in full when I get back. Oh yeah, one more thing. I'm gonna leave this BFG locked in my office for now. Please have IT security change my door code to 901. Sure as hell don't need anyone messing around with it. Chief Abrams, and the law. In a quest to provide armies with a well-balanced set of weapons, UAC looked to the past when designing and manufacturing the newest line of Mach 2 chain guns. The retro style and mechanical sturdiness of the chain gun is a must for all hardened combat veterans. Early adapters have nicknamed it Saw. With its armor-piercing 30 caliber bullets, the chain gun is capable of literally cutting opponents in two. Packed with all the punch you need in close combat fighting, the chain gun delivers unparalleled reliability and functionality. Always on the forefront of technology, the UAC is making safer worlds through superior firepower.
schematics show all passages out of your area blocked. You by traversing the EFR, mechanical subsystem with two possible routes to it. Activating the system will get you a direct route, but it's dangerous. Extending the service bridges is safer, but the lighting systems are fried. Make your choice, Good luck. This is the audio log of plant manager Henry Nelson, dated October 24th, 2145. I don't know how I should report this, so I'll just talk about what I know and what I need. I've had quite a few employees reporting to me that they've heard strange sounds, like voices talking to them, calling them, even when they were alone. At first, I didn't believe them. The guys down here like to kid around, but they assured me they were serious. I ignored the stories at first, until one day, I heard something too. I was working on one of the lift-up service panels, and I distinctly heard the voice of someone saying, Over here. I quickly turned to see who was there, but the passage was completely empty. I looked around, but I didn't see another soul. I even checked the work logs, and no one else was working near that area. I don't want to sound crazy here, but my guys and myself are a little spooked, and some of the guys were even talking about ghosts. So, to make everyone, including myself, feel a little more comfortable, I'd like to request that a security team make a thorough check of the EFR area. Thank you. Henry Nelson.
14, entry secure. Move in and take positions. All quiet. Did you hear that? This is Lee. Give me status. Always clear. There's nothing here, Sam. What the hell? inspection of the coolant system, I discovered yet another safety violation. As I've stated repeatedly, our service manuals must be followed to the letter. Now, this includes changing back filters for the coolant system on schedule and not when maintenance gets around to it. Now, as you know, unclean back filters will create pressure inside the coolant system's release tubes. Even a minor disruption in a release tube can dislodge or destroy its coolant rod, overheating the core, and possibly sending the entire facility up in smoke. Now let me be clear, if I see this again, the team responsible will be transferred to sewage treatment before the day is over. Paul Rad, Chief Technical Officer for the Enpro Facility. I appreciate UAC's concerns following the number of stress-related illnesses spreading throughout the base. However, I don't understand why we require such a large detail of armed security bots in Enpro. Now you may disagree, but I trust my team's mental condition far more than whatever programming is running inside those bots. Which brings me to the reason for this report. Today, one of my best engineers, Patrick Thomas, was nearly shot when a bot refused his clearance. That's right, shot. Luckily, a nearby team from maintenance caught up to it and smashed it with a pipe wrench before it could chase Pat down. Now, it'll be days before he's ready to return to work, and I don't think you'll ever get him close to one of those bots again. Our jobs are difficult enough without needing to avoid getting shot. If we're going to be treated like prisoners, I respectfully request that you afford us the courtesy of being guarded by people instead of machines.
main reactor operation temperature exceeding safe levels. log of weapon analyst Teresa Cesar, dated November 3rd, 2145. I'm pleased to report that the preliminary tests on the ammo storage in the new Mach 3 plasma gun has far exceeded our expectations. We realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques engineered in the Alpha Lab molecular compactor. I believe with the ongoing compaction research, we will reach our goal of three times the plasma storage currently available in standard ammo packs. I would also like to mention that all of the employees here at the ENPRO plant have been very helpful and quite eager to accommodate all of my requests. For security reasons, I have locked the plasma gun and the extra ammo in locker 063 with door code 972. End of lock. Service bridge now operational.
Audio log of weapon analyst Teresa Chazar, dated November 3rd, 2145. I'm pleased to report that the preliminary tests on the ammo storage in the new Mach 3 plasma gun has far exceeded our expectations. We've realized a full 50% gain in the storage capacity of ammo packs as a result of utilizing techniques and... Steve Hammer, service technician. Since Private Swenson wigged out, shot up that drink machine, then lit himself up with a plasma gun, we've all been a bit nervous. All of us in maintenance knew he was losing it. Finally, when that darn drink machine wouldn't accept his credits, he lost it. Started swearing up and down, and you had to laugh when that machine lit up. But before any of us could react, he fed himself enough plasma to power an office building. There wasn't enough head to clean up. Just vapor. It's a bad thing to happen to anyone. Anyway, I know with all the psych problems we've had lately, we need the additional security, but when the guards start going nuts... I don't know, all this extra weapons and ammunition... I mean, do we really need so much firepower laying around? Well, a couple of us decided to lock up all of the unsecured plasma rounds we could find. The code is 734. I think we'll all sleep a bit better tonight knowing it's locked up.
Get your ass to the communications facility as quickly as possible. We gotta get that message to the fleet.
This is the audio log of Controller James Holliday, dated September 24th, 2145. The recent transport issues from Site 3 have caused the board to call a formal inquiry. We'll study weight limits and suggest better ways to provide protection for Site 3 artifacts. Our equipment. PDAs, does anything work with these? Finish this later.
This is the audio log of Officer Ron Ridge, dated October 16, 2145. Recent transport tunnel accidents are causing major headaches for both supply and maintenance. Each accident cost is an estimated one to three hour delay in what are mostly time sensitive shipments. It's becoming evident that certain junctions need safety adjustments as well as recommitment to driving safety by all personnel. The MPRO to Com Center route has shown the biggest increase in accidents over the past six months. Safety signs and approved lighting are needed throughout the main junctions over the stretch of tunnels and paths. Absolutely, no recreational vehicle passage should be allowed during peak hours. All personnel should use monorail travel whenever possible to keep cargo shipments flowing smoothly. Service lift called to station. Exit now accessible.
service lift called to station. Service lift called to station.
Are you at the communications facility yet? You gotta get that message to the fleet now. Watch out for Campbell and Swan. Don't you wait for the fleet to get a damn luck with half a day. Communication system done. overload. Communications shut down.
the system computers are showing all off base communication down. It's that fool swan. We're gonna have to find another way to send that message. Make your way to the satellite room and manually establish a link from there. Base schematics are showing the quickest way is through engineering. You can't fail me. Get that message sent. This is the audio log of technician Seamus Dated October 16th, 2145. Our relatively new remote module replacement procedures are taking some time for maintenance technicians to adjust to. In the long run, it's a much safer, quicker, and easier method. Once a technician receives a call, he simply locates the problem module and gives a replacement command through the remote terminal located in the main comm block. This will initiate the replacement procedure as well as create a repair report which notifies the repair team of an incoming module. Some minor repairs can be done on site with normal equipment. I'm hoping the new system will need less and less use once the source of the recent power fluctuations is located and solved. The system is built to handle most other things with its automated recovery systems.
This is the uh, audio log of Officer Ben Wolf, dated October 7th, 2145. <clears throat> Recent uh, unauthorized transmissions have been uncovered in the off-site redundant logs. These logs are usually not validated, but uh, an unscheduled audit has shown significant activity. More investigating will be done to get to the bottom of this matter. Particularly interesting are transmission blocks D4560 and uh, DE3288, which have no links to base systems. More to follow. of the invasion was from the main portal here in Delta. After you send that transmission, get here as quickly as possible. Transmission set.
established. Marine, you hear me? Back off from that console. Do not call for reinforcements. We don't know what the hell is going on here. And until we do, this area remains under UAC control. Cancel that transmission. Satellite connection established. Transmission terminated. We did the right thing. Until we know what's happening here, we need to keep ourselves sealed off from everyone else. The monorail entrance looks clear. Meet up with us there. We need to reach the Delta Complex and stop this. Green, you have just violated a direct order. Get your ass back to that console and send that transmission.
the UAC Maintenance Department. This video will provide you with the necessary tools and information to do your job efficiently and safely. A safe worker is a happy worker, and your safety is our number one priority at UAC. Observe all signs and follow all procedures to keep you and your co-workers out of harm's way. 
cleanup is one of the most important aspects of what we do in maintenance. This phase of our job keeps everyone safe, and research has shown that working in a clean and toxic-free environment has a positive benefit on overall productivity. Power generation on Mars produces two byproducts, steam and green goo. We vent the steam all over the base, through vents, floor grates, cleverly placed pipes, and pretty much any place else. The goo is a result of the MFS process reacting with core elements in the Martian soil. It is not radioactive, but it is quite toxic. Remove all toxic spills at once. Hazmat suits are the best way to protect yourself when a spill occurs. And if you happen to come in contact with the goo, report immediately to a medical station for a scrub down. After a few days in confinement, you should be ready to report back to work. Report any rule violations to your immediate supervisor. And don't forget to read your employee handbook for additional rules and information. Log of Nicola Sedgway, member of USC Mars Hazmat Response Team, dated October 1st, 2145. We have concluded that the Martian atmosphere is wreaking havoc on the exhaust valve seals in the standard number 5 disposal drums. The engineers cannot explain the high level of contaminants in our internal atmosphere. The air scrubbers and filtration systems all seem to be operating at normal levels. It, a small layer of particulate is making it into the storage areas. That is what caused the lockdown yesterday. EAP director Charles Hollis informs me that the personnel won't be harmed by these contaminants in the air, but we've seen that they do cause a corrosive reaction when introduced to the rubber compounds used in the storage systems. Effective immediately, all number 5 disposal drums must be locked away in at least a class 2 rated transport medium. Assessment ends.
No need to rush. I am everywhere, and everything here is mine. It's a pity you did not alert the fleet, but it is of no consequence. I'll alert them myself. They will come to the rescue and be consumed by my legion. We will use their ships to bring this hell to Earth. You won't live to see it. And you will die long before you have a chance to warn them.
toxicity level detected.
will not be your end. Your soul will burn in hell forever. Warning. Danger level red. Lethal toxicity level detected. Air spreader one, air spreader two, rate of three activated. Attention. Air pressure toxicity level decreasing. Rise, rise, quas near Yavapan. There is no death for you. This is the audio log of Engineer Sam Harding, dated April 5th, 2145. I have just completed repairs on the magnetic locks and have significantly reprogrammed the pressure sensors on the monorail systems. My fellow engineers and I are confident that the accident of last week will never happen again. The accident should never have happened in the first place. The internal sensors led the computers to believe that there was a vacuum inside the vehicle. Unfortunately, the computer decided that the only way to fix this pressure discrepancy was to open all doors in an attempt to equalize pressure with the outside. I'm going over 15,000 lines of code today, and I see no reason for this tragic event to have occurred. But somehow, the logs show the discrepancy is clear as day. Honestly, this looks to me like another case of a solid system going to hell in a handbasket. I'm confident that the layers of protection I added to the code today will prevent any such occurrences from happening again. I'm off to meet engineer Jim Torben at the access doors to the Delta Complex platform to try and troubleshoot a faulty track sensor that's been causing the door to stick. Environmental Reprocessing Center. Next stop, Site 2. Who are you? What are you doing? I was waiting here on the train for my partner. He went to investigate what was going on, but he never came back. Now, I don't, I don't know where he is. I don't know what the hell's going on. But I bet it has to do with those artifacts we were digging up in Site 2. I bet they're somehow connected with those... Things in the Delta Complex. Remember, safety first. Please do not exit the vehicle without wearing proper environmental protection. In the event of an emergency stop, our set will be dispatched immediately for your safety. Have a nice day. Now entering Site 2.
Warning, air lock malfunction. Please contact engineering to facilitate repairs. Thank you, and have a nice day.
Engineering, please report to Delta Complex Access Ramp. Track sensor failure detected.
Automated turret guns online. Automated turret guns online. Warning. Automated turret guns online. Attention. Automated turret guns offline. Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Assignment of engineers to the lower Delta Labs has become almost impossible. In six months, we've gone from a volunteer surplus to a critical deficiency of qualified personnel willing to accept assignment. Increases in both pay and benefits have done little to help this situation. Through exit interviews as well as the weekly Delta Medical Brief, it's become apparent to everyone the rate of sudden and unexplained mental illness is way beyond acceptable levels, even for Mars. They're derogatorily being called sub-delts up here, and I have a feeling this attitude will spread to other parts of the UAC. End of log. This is the audio log of Robert Price, Delta Operational Director in charge of personnel, recruitment, evaluation, and placement. Disciplinary Action Report 40C-8, responding to Mars City Administration request. Delta Labs 1 is currently addressing a problem concerning theft of security equipment. Four members of the security detail assigned to the Delta Labs have been reprimanded with three others under investigation. It seems caches of weapons, armor, and ammo have been discovered in various places throughout the Delta Labs. We've located some of the missing equipment and have information that we hope will lead us to more. I have a team investigating storage room 21D with security code 298, where I've learned stolen items may be located. I hope to recover all items and find all personnel responsible. End of log.
Systems down. Emergency power only. All Delta operations suspended. Secure service tunnel one. It's not far from your position. We'll be there.
Please follow safety procedures.
This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated October 29th to 145. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia, and I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling. Approximately 80% of all extraplanar participants exhibit signs of mild neuroses within the first 48 hours after returning from their expeditions. Within 72 hours, 75% of patients exhibit extreme signs of paranoid delusion and violence. We have isolated these cases in hopes of finding the pathogen. As yet, we can find no biological contaminants that would lead to such drastic changes in cognitive processing. It seems that whatever this pathogen is, it attacks higher brain functions and only leaves more basal functions in the lower brain stem. We've witnessed that a high percentage of subjects lose ability for rational thought and communication skills, and then the physical changes become evident. Subjects in this group appear to atrophy. Skin pales, muscles become slack, bone, teeth, and fingernails become almost translucent, veiny sinews of their former selves. I have never seen anything like this in my career. Our observations continue. This is the audio log of medical supervisor Peter Raleigh, dated November 1st, 2145. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired today at 1543 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. This is approximately 110 hours after his return from expeditionary missions. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. He was the last surviving member of his outfit. Four other squad mates, who also came back with Private Jensen, expired from injuries suffered on that last mission shortly after their return. Before his death, Private Jensen was heard screaming in both English and other languages. Something about demon hordes feasting on our souls. The other language was later discovered to be Aramaic. Due to security concerns in the area, I've secured some armaments within my office. We don't have much time. 
We let it through. The evil. The protective stabilizer on the portal just failed after Petruger took the device. It, it was an artifact we had found in the ruins. He took it into the portal, and Hal followed him out. You have to help me first. I'm going to try to get the teleporter systems running again. The areas are destroyed around us, so it's the only way through this part of the complex. You need to find me a working plasma inducer. It's all I need to get the teleporter working. You can look for it in operations. I have a security clearance. All of us. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Systems active. Access denied. Psychotic element directly evident. Reference interview G8A. Private Steve Jensen, October 18.
Recon systems deactivated. Patient 0432, a private Steve Jensen of the UAC Darklight Armor Corps Division, expired yesterday at 1543. Private Jensen was suffering from paranoid delusions and full-blown dementia. Treatment was unsuccessful. Initial psychiatric interviews suggested only mild psychosis with speech, motor activity and thought processes within normal range, paranoia being the only psychotic element directly evident. Reference interview G8A. Private Steve Jensen, October 18, 2145. UAC psychologist Dr. Hooper interviewing Steve Jensen, male, age 27. <clears throat> Steve, can you talk to me about the last few weeks, please? I don't want to talk. Well, I'm here to help you, Steve. I've tried talking. They think I'm crazy. You think I'm crazy. They, your colleagues, aren't doctors. Let me help you. Help? Nothing can help us. Prior sessions over a period of 72 hours reveal rapid deterioration of both physical and mental capacity, with behavior inconsistent with any known patterns. The patient was responsive for brief periods and had to be restrained during interviews. Reference interview H-3-2, Private Steve Jensen, October 21st, 2145. Tell me what you see, Steve. I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to feel it. <clears throat> They'll be here soon. And then you'll see it. Can you talk about what you see? <laughs> Steve? Patient unresponsive, terminating interview. We have exhausted all known forms of drug treatment in hopes of finding a way to abate this strange outbreak of dementia. And I have yet to receive any additional data from the psychiatrists back on Earth. Options are quickly dwindling.
Audio log for Phil Wilson, medical technician, Delta Labs, October 20th, 2145. Today, I witnessed the third test of the teleporter in the three weeks that I've been here. The volunteers are becoming harder and harder to come by, and it isn't difficult to see why. They all come back screaming like loons about demons, pools of blood. It's real fire and brimstone stuff. At first, I wasn't paying much attention, just doing my job, but the last was Robert Clayton. Now, I met him my first day here. This guy chews up rocks and spits out gravel, as tough as they come. Having to sedate him and drag his drooling body to the isolation, it's really freaked me out. I'm gonna put in for a transfer as soon as I'm able. As requested, the following is my initial feedback on my first trip through the portal. Private First Class Frank Cinder stated October 15th, 2145. I, uh, I don't know exactly where to begin. Obviously, I survived the first trip and feel no worse for the wear. I, I'm not feeling any of the symptoms reported by the others who have gone in before me, but I'm at a point where I'm still trying to process everything. Thankfully, the place looks deserted and devoid of any life, but, uh, flames and heat and stench of the place. It smells of death, decay, and burnt flesh. Tomorrow, we're going back in with some of the eggheads, um, science division. We start securing forward positions, and we expect to start sending out the mapping droids at the same time. I must admit, I'm a new person. I don't understand what we're doing there or, or, or what we hope to prove. PFC Cinders, signing off.
time. Get that plasma inducer, quickly. Medical report. Process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. Systems activated. Teleportation begins in T minus three.
Interesting. Ah, you surprised me. I'm glad to see you. I would have hoped they would have sent more than just one guy, though. I've been studying one of the specimens we brought back, to see if there's something physiological that would be a weakness, a way to stop them. And I found nothing so far. Haven't had enough time. I'm gonna stay here and keep looking. It's the only thing I can do. There are combat supplies in the storage cabinet in the next room. The code is 624. I hope you can use it. stasis chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens of the was extremely resilient to abrasion or incision, which is complicated internal studies. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility.
Welcome to the Delta Complex Stasis Chambers. This facility was constructed to house and study the extra-dimensional beings, which were recovered during some of the first teleporter tests originating from Delta Level 3. While little is known about their native environment, the specimens appear to be carbon-based life forms with extremely high heat tolerances. The epidermal tissue is extremely resistant to a great important system, which is complicated in terms of study. Observational studies have shown incredible strength and agility, as well as the ability for some specimens what to manifest and control relic coating plasma masses. One, or the method by which so these plasma masses are created was discovered is in 2104. It is believed that the specimens possess a rudimentary intelligence and social structure, as was demonstrated during the first tragic expedition other than they While the existed, cost in human life has been great in acquiring these specimens, we hope to one day complete genomic What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul Cube. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where UAC researchers have unearthed evidence of a long-lost civilization. We know nothing of this civilization other than they existed, and that they were all wiped out in some type of cataclysmic event, according to what we've been able to decode from stone tablets found throughout the ruins. What clues we have been able to piece together reveal a culturally advanced society whose technology can only be described as mystic, as evidenced by Yuan's strange characteristics. Efforts to further examine U1 have been futile. Mass spectrometer and radiation scanning methods have failed to provide reliable identification of the molecular makeup of this artifact. The object cannot be weighed, and in all tests, we've been unable to determine its mass. All attempts to physically manipulate or open the artifact have been met with no success. We also have had no success in deciphering the symbols adorning U1. What we do know is that the thermographic readings are constant, unwavering temperature of 98.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Our research continues, and we hope that with continued investment and research, we can, one day soon, learn to exploit the technologies that make up U1. What you see before you is a relic codenamed U1, or simply Soul U. It was discovered in 2104, located in a geographic region where you may see researchers.
Access granted. This is the personal audio log of Dr. Frank Serrano, dated September 19th, 2145. I've been brainstorming on Petruger's thoughts about achieving sustained, uninterrupted transfer to the teleportation units. Currently, our systems can only build enough of a charge to have the portals open for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. It's enough time to get a team through, but not enough time to send in some of the heavier. Engineering in the Inpro facility informed me that we can theoretically boost the active portal time to 45 seconds quite easily. But this will require rerouting power from central processing, and we just can't afford the downtime. The power requirements for this is as we saw. We're sucking power from three veins in Inpro just to power chamber one. I have no idea how we can sustain transfers for longer than 60 seconds without giving serious thought to reorganizing the teleport power grid. I'll sleep on this. This is Dr. Frank Serrano signing off. Destroy him! Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. This is the this is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 16, 2145. Why is it that I keep getting the crummy jobs? Armor Corps, first platoon, and first science team were completely wiped out this morning on their second excursion. And I am the one charged with writing the report and sending this information back to the So here I am. First cup of coffee for the day. Five hours of sleep the night before. No shower. And I have 20 dead bodies to fill out paperwork on. I haven't seen the actual corpses, but word coming down from the grapevine says that it looks like they have been hacked up pretty good. This has everyone on the base spooked. A trooper is nowhere to be found, and there are a lot of questions being asked with no answers from anyone. Last I heard, they were suiting up the next outfit with the new BFGs. Sounds like they weren't taking any chances on this next trip with them packing that kind of firepower.
This is the audio log of Administrative Assistant Han Lee, dated October 20th, 2145. Just when I thought this job couldn't get much worse, it did. Delta scientists sent another group of researchers through the portal two days ago and they failed to return at their scheduled time. Radio transmissions to the research party have gone unanswered. Even our LZ tracking systems can't find them. We fear that they are dead. Losing lives is one thing, but losing our proprietary technologies is another. The team was equipped with the newest BFG weaponry. We fear those guns may have fallen into the hands of those that killed them. We don't know who or what is behind that portal. But until we find out where our guns are, I'm suggesting we suspend operations to the portal. Thank you. End of log. Decontamination process started. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. destination. Decontamination complete. Have a nice day. My patience with you is wearing thin.
dead, and soon we will join them. destination.
Warning. Chamber malfunction. Decontamination chamber sequence initiated. Decontamination process started. Primary system failure. System shutdown. 
backup systems online. Stop him!
This is the audio of a research specialist Simon Gardner, dated August 8, 2145. It seems that I have misplaced the rest of the science team. I don't know how it happened. This place? But I don't know. This place does funny things with your eyes and your perception of time. Hopefully, I just run into the next sector and I'm going to find it for you. And I'm going off to find it. This is the audio log of research specialists in Hungary. Audio this team, final four to five. It's been two days now since I've seen any other team members. I don't know how to say this is going to be out of our way. They were just... They could only be described I have never seen such a big thing move so quickly. Salads. Woods and the street. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before they find me again. I'm convinced they are toying me, allowing me to stay too stuck. I see the shadow something. What are they talking about? I'm not sure how this one is. Too many shadows here. But every moment I feel them creeping closer to it. Okay.
step you take, your soul moves closer to me.
I'll try to make it out on my own. This is the audio log of Counselor Elliot Swan, dated November 15, 2145. This entire research facility is in chaos. There's at least a 90% death rate among civilian personnel. Whatever Petruger unleashed is literally consuming the base. People have been turned into some sort of undead creatures that are relentless. Campbell and I are making our way towards the communications facility. We must stop all communications. If a distress call leaves the base, then everyone here and on Earth is doomed. This is the audio log of Counselor Elliot Swan, dated November 16, 2145. Campbell and I were unable to reach the main portal in the Delta Complex, but that portal may be inconsequential to a more disturbing discovery. We have uncovered reference to another portal, created by the demons themselves, a passageway between Hell and Mars. We suspect it resides within the cavern somewhere near the archaeological dig. The fleet is on its way. Campbell and I will attempt to move there and somehow either shut it down or destroy it. That... that... hellhole must be closed before the fleet arrives.
This is the audio log for Tony Bates, Mars Security IT Division, September 25th, 2145. I spent the last four hours going through the code for the door systems here in Central Processing. This has proven to be a real bitch of a glitch to work out. I've traced through every system I could think of, but access to Lab A continues to be problematic for the time being. All the regular access codes seem to be working fine, but the database will not allow access rights to be granted to new visitors. In the meantime, I'm adding a backdoor code into the systems for IT staff and the eggheads, so if they need access to Lab A while the systems are on the fritz, they can use the code 627 to bypass door security. End of lock. Audio log for Tony Bates, Mars Security IT Division, October 15, 2145. I resume my investigation into case A-10982, the systems intrusion that took place in the CPU complex yesterday. All network traces seem to originate from an old system located in Site 2, Office S2-038. What is truly troubling is that engineering informs me electrical systems have been offline in that section for years and were only reactivated this morning in order to prepare more storage space. I'm completely stumped on this one. How does a hack originate from a section of the base that has been out of commission for so long? I will make another report once I personally investigated the suspect office in Site 2. End of log. This is the audio log of Charlie Haskell, Delta Labs technician, dated September 23rd, 2145. 
We're making good progress in increasing the max range of Chamber 3 in the Delta Complex. We've been crunching numbers all night and feel that with a few slight modifications, we should be able to boost output to cover all of Delta. The latest schedule changes are wreaking havoc on our current systems, and it's not uncommon to see system utilization at 99% for days at a time. We understand that Lab A has finally received the NREC 6809 systems. Please consider this a formal request for a block of two hours to run our latest formulas at the soonest available time.
Sarge. <sighs> find him. <sighs> Gotta find him. My gun. He's got my gun. <sighs> I killed that pathetic bodyguard, and now I will kill you.
BFGC research and design. The BFG 9000 is the most advanced firearm ever designed. Fully self-contained and deployed as a handheld platform, it is capable of an excessive amount of firepower. The BFG 9000 contains sophisticated friend or foe technology that discriminates targets in real time. Each projectile contains a small but very powerful that actively maintains targeting and delivers a stream charge down each beam to soften targets before detonation. The detonation stage. I can smell your fear.
This is the scientific journal of Dr. Richard Davis, dated August 8, 2145. We've just broken through to a new chamber, and I think I found the map alluded to on one of the tablets. The artifact is constructed into the ceiling, and it is a magnificent find. It appears to be made of some crystalline material, and even after all this time, it is still emitting a soft glow. The markings on it were strangely familiar when I first observed it, and after digitizing it and analyzing it, I'm certain this is a map of our solar system. It seems to show a connection between Mars and Earth. My current working theory is that the last survivors used the teleportation technology to escape to Earth. The ramifications of this are overwhelming. This may end up proving that we are actually descendants of this race, and what we are exploring is our own history. I'm going to report my findings as soon as we finish the excavation, and they should show up in corporate within a few days. These are truly exciting times. Log out. in both archaeological discoveries. Subsequent examination of the surrounding area and carbon dating of the tablets brought UAC researchers to the conclusion that the tablets belonged to a civilization that existed. Are you sure you killed them? And were what? You have the soul cube. Just like in the carvings I've been researching. If I'm correct, that cube is our only chance to stop this. No time to explain now. You need to get to the caverns quickly. Take my PDA. It's right there on the desk. It's got security codes for the area and my research logs on it. It'll help. I can't go with you. I need to finish my work here. Good luck. This is the audio log of Dr. Pierce Rogers. I don't know if I'll make it off the base alive. I don't have much time, so I'll sum up what I have quickly and upload the rest of my finding into the data bank. I hope someone finds them. It was all on the stone tablets, all the answers. I can't believe we never saw it. It was as plain as day. If we had only slowed down the development of the teleporters and tried to really learn what the tablets were trying to tell us, trying to warn us, the ancient people battled the same demons that are attacking us now. The demons came through the teleporters that they built, just like now. They created the soul cube and used it to stop the demons, to drive them back to hell. I don't know how, but that must be the answer. That is why that artifact was left behind, left for someone to find if something like that ever happens again. I can't reach Delta from here. I won't make it. I truly hope and pray someone finds the soul cube, and it helps. Lord, help us. End of log. Brought UAC researchers to the conclusion that the tablets belonged to a civilization that existed long ago and were.
were placed in a holy burial ground of some sort, utilizing the best minds in linguistics and UAC proprietary... <laughs>
service lift called to station.
Who are you? What are you doing here? You're gonna attract attention and then they'll come. Get out of here now. Take that key card. It'll help you get to the surface. I'm not going anywhere until I know all those things are dead. You can't stay here. You're making too much noise. They'll come for us. Audio report regarding dangerous working conditions in caverns below Delta. This is Bob Cody. Today is October 18th, 2145. My crew has been rewiring the generators as ordered for the last several days. We can't finish the work. We're stopping after today. This job ain't worth dying for. We'll be collecting our gear and tying down what we can. We call them howls because that's how they start. First the howling gets louder, the screaming, then shaking earth, the Mars quakes, throws everything around. Makes walking on the catwalks impossible and working with voltage. Stupid. The noise is as if some of the guys spoke, and I don't blame them. Nothing natural about what we've heard. If someone can figure out what's causing the howlers, I'll get the crew to finish the job. Till then, we'll be available for a new assignment tomorrow.
The initial chain was discovered in 2115. It leads into what is now known as Site 1. Site 1 is the largest of the sites, and we are still actively working there. It is made up of a series of chambers and connecting tunnels, all of which are covered in glyphs and symbols. Using the UAC pattern processor, we have finally been able to understand some of the glyphs. And from them, here is what we have learned. The ancient people looked like us, at least to the extent that they were bipedal and were similar in shape and size. Their level of technology was astounding. For instance, the glyphs at each site were carved into the rock by some sort of machine, and each one is precisely cut from the stone. It far exceeds the precision of anything we can do. They had a social structure that seemed very aristocratic, with a lot of emphasis on social stature and structure. Site 2 is a much smaller set of chambers, mostly containing burial sites, temples, and various amounts of individual artifacts. This site has been photographed and cleared out, and all materials back on Earth for study and review. Site 3 produced our prize artifact, what we call the Soul Cube. If you have read or seen the other material, you probably know that this once grand civilization was attacked by some unknown force. And if we can believe what is written in stone, they sacrificed most of their society to drive the invaders back. There are additional reports filed on the Soul Cube with Central Administration. We also recovered several other device-type artifacts. They are not as ornate as the Soul Cube, but each appears unique. We are still learning how to interpret all of the glyphs, and hopefully, once we have that completed, the science teams can provide more detailed information on their technology. These are truly unique and special times for archaeologists.
in both archaeological discovery and analysis, the UAC is proud to showcase the latest findings on four unique and fascinating artifacts. These tablets were originally discovered in the dig site under what has become known as Site 3. Subsequent examination of the surrounding area and carbon dating of the tablets brought UAC researchers to the conclusion that the tablets belonged to a civilization that existed millennia ago and were placed in a holy burial ground of some sort. Utilizing the best minds in linguistics and UAC proprietary pattern recognition software, the tablets were exhaustively examined. What we found was fantastic. The first tablet provided us with a wealth of scientific data, specifically detailing the mathematical concepts behind teleportation. UAC researchers used this information as the cornerstone for building the Delta teleportation devices. The second and third tablets illustrate an epic story a story of war, and how, faced with impossible odds, the ultimate sacrifice of an entire race to achieve victory. The fourth tablet details how the essence of each individual was captured and placed in the artifact we now refer to as the Soul Cube. This device was wielded by their mightiest warrior, and with it he banished the invading horde forever. Our researchers are still analyzing a recently found hidden section of the fourth zone and some related fragments. It goes into detail on the invading force and indicates the remaining survivors may have teleported somewhere, where we do not know, although it seems to reference a map we have yet to locate. To date, there remains no evidence of any type of invasion at any of the sites. Our assumption is that time has removed all but what we now see.
proud to showcase the latest findings on four unique and fascinating artifacts. These tablets were originally discovered in the dig site under what has become known as Site 3. Subsequent examination of the surrounding area and carbon dating of the
Ultron Zulu, this is Echo One. Give me a visual status. Echo One, this is Recon Zulu. We've got massive damage all over the base. This place looks like hell. I've got life signs on the bio scanner. Eyes sharp. Echo One, we've got a survivor, a Marine. Corporal, you hear me? You all right? Can you hear me? Echo One, this is Recon Zulu. Prepare for medevac. Copy that. Have you located Counselor Swan? Yes, sir. He's dead. Roger, Recon One. What about Dr. Petruger? He's nowhere to be found, sir.